May wrap up of four. Nope, it is not May yet. Not May yet. <laughs> everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my April wrap up for 2022. I read a total of 14 books this month so I'll be splitting this up into two separate parts. This is the first part where I will talk about the first seven books that I read this month so without further ado let us get started. The first book I have is A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. I give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. This follows Margaret Welty who is the town's outcast. She is patiently waiting for her alchemist mother to return from her long journey. One day while walking her little dog Trouble, she sees the Hala, which is a mythical beast that has magical powers. Spotting the Hala means that the Half Moon Hunt will soon commence, which is a competition to kill off the Hala, the last of these legendary beasts. In the hopes of making her mother return from her journey of trying to find the Hala, Margaret wants to join the race as a sharpshooter. Unfortunately, only teams are able to enter the race, and one of the team members must be an alchemist, but her dreams are answered when Weston Winters shows up on her doorstep, wanting an apprenticeship with her mother. So both of these parties end up entering the hunt, and they are entering for different reasons, but both are are very determined to win and it's the story of that. This is a very slow paced book but it is a very character driven story. The setting of the book was very atmospheric. It felt almost like a 1920s-esque era but with magic and alchemy thrown in. I found the idea of the Half Moon Hunt to be very interesting although it didn't really occur until the last little bit of the book. We got a lot of backstory on it. I really loved the slow burn romance between Wes and Margaret. I loved watching them butt heads at the beginning but then slowly learn to trust one another and grow closer as the story progressed. I was also a big fan of the complex family dynamics in this not only between Margaret and her mother but also Wes and his many many sisters. I love how the sisters all had unique personalities and I loved getting to know each and every one of them. I definitely think that this would be considered the grumpy ex sunshine trope but reversed so it was the boy who was the sunshine and the girl who was grumpy which I personally just think is like 10 times better than the way it normally is but that could just be me but I was here for it. I also really like that we got dual point of views between Margaret and Wes because I think that that really enhanced the story and the emotions that were explored. Wes was definitely my favorite character. I just think he is such a little ball of sunshine, little cinnamon roll, full of charm, and I really liked how he was dyslexic and when Maggie found out she was so sweet and helped him through his trying to learn all the alchemy spells without being the strongest reader. I also just really loved how strong Maggie's character became in the end. She spent the majority of the book discovering her self-worth. I also just really liked the exploration of the mother's abuse and neglect and how that made Maggie feel. Also big fan of Trouble and Shimmer who is Maggie's horse. I'm always a big fan of animal companions so I'll never complain about them. This book says it's a standalone but I am like praying that we get a companion novel or a sequel or something with these characters because I just fell in love with them and I would love to see where they are now. Definitely recommend it if you're into slower paced books that are very character driven. If that's not your thing then you probably will hate this but I had a really good time reading it so... 4.5 out of 5. Next I have The One True You and Me. This is by Remy K. England and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Kaylee Beaumont who is an up-and-coming fan fiction writer who is attending Great Con where they just submitted a piece of their original work for a competition. They have three goals for this weekend. One, they are going to use they them pronouns for the first time and see how it fits. Two, they are going to wear more masculine presenting cosplays. And three, they are going to kiss a girl for the first time. Tegan Miller is Miss Virginia. She is participating in the Miss Cosmic Teen pageant. She has a very good chance this year of winning the $25,000 scholarship that goes along with the crown, but she is hiding one thing from the judges. She is very, very gay. She thinks that she can hide all of this from the judges, but then when she arrives at the hotel, she quickly realizes that the convention of her dreams is being held at the same place and time as the pageant. As long as she can behave around her rival, Miss Carolina, she thinks that she can make it through the pageant unscathed. 
But then Tegan and Kay meet one night and their connection is undeniable and it's like the story of that. This was a cute story. I did enjoy my time reading it. I liked the premise and the characters but nothing really stood out to me or made it very memorable in my opinion. I liked the dual point of view between Tegan and Kay. I think it was really well done. I liked the exploration of Kay's identity and them discovering who they are. I also really enjoyed the friendships in this. I loved how they all held each other accountable for their actions. I know that a lot of people can definitely relate to finding some of their best friends on an online community so I really liked that aspect of the story. I also really enjoyed Tegan's character. I thought they were very sweet and I really liked how she let Kay come to terms with what they were feeling in the moment without pushing anything too much. I will say that I think that they were a little bit too insta-lovey for my personal taste, but they did grow on me as the story progressed and I saw them interact more. But I did really like how Tegan made it kind of her mission to show people that beauty pageants don't need to be this super strict, rigid system, and that anybody should be able to join and be who they are without being ridiculed or scared to be their true self. But like I said, overall I think that this was a cute read. I liked the characters but nothing super memorable so 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I have Scout's Honor by Lily Anderson. I give this a 3 out of 5 stars as well. This follows Prudence Perry who is a ladybird scout taking after her mother. The ladybirds are a secret society that hunt and kill mullagrubs who are intergalactic parasites that are created and feed off of human emotions. If fed enough, they turn carnivorous and feed off of the humans themselves. After an attack one day that led to the death of her best friend, Prudence quits the ladybirds with a diagnosis of PTSD and anxiety. When Prudence is asked by her mother to train three new recruits for the ladybirds, she reluctantly agrees and it's kind of the story of that. So I was initially drawn to this book because as a child I was a Girl Scout so I just thought the concept of this book sounded really campy and fun. The idea of the different mullagrubs feeding off of different human emotions was really interesting to me and I was very intrigued to see how the story was going to go. But unfortunately, I found this book to be very average. I didn't really care what was happening in it. There wasn't really anything that jumped out at me or made me love the book, but I didn't hate it at the same time. I did like how different the mullet grubs were. I thought it was interesting to see which grub fed off of what emotion and what they looked like. I like how family obligation and expectations was explored in this. I also really loved learning more about the baby birds as Prudence called them. I think they all had very unique personalities and I loved learning more about them as the story went on. I just think that they were super supportive of one another and I loved watching their friendships grow. I will say I hated Prudence's mother and aunt. I think they were terrible people. <laughs> they just made me very angry with the way that they treated Prudence, especially after she was diagnosed. They just kept trying to push her even though the doctor and the psychiatrist was like, maybe don't do that. They were like, nah, we're gonna cure her. Like, that's not how PTSD and anxiety works. I will say though, I adore this cover. I think it's super cute and just super campy, as I said, but I just found it super average, so three out of five stars. The next book I have is The Maidens by Alex Michelides, and I gave this a two out of five stars. I was not a fan of it. This follows Mariana, who is a group therapist, just trying to make it through the days after the death of her husband, Sebastian. One day, Mariana receives a phone call from her niece, Zoe, who is attending school at Cambridge University. A friend of Zoe's and a member of the secret society on campus called the Maidens, which consists of all females run by the Greek tragedy professor Edward Fruska, has gone missing. Her body is found under suspicious circumstances, so Mariana decides to go see Zoe and comfort her. As Mariana spends more time on campus and more of the maidens' bodies turn up, she is convinced that Edward Fosca is the murderer. So she decides to launch an investigation of her own to prove that he killed all these girls. So I haven't actually read the author's other book, The Silent Patient, which everybody says is a lot better than this one. This one has received a lot of mixed reviews and I was hoping that I was going to end up on the I liked this side of those reviews, but I definitely did not. I was just really bored reading this. I was constantly waiting for something to happen and nothing ever did. I didn't really care about any of these characters. The only one that really piqued my interest was the mystery narrator. I did 
did enjoy how short these chapters were though. I think it made it more digestible. I also really liked the Dark Academia Cambridge setting. I think that it brought the atmosphere and vibes of the overall story together quite nicely. I will say that I think that a book called The Maidens uh, should actually include those maidens. I found it really strange that we barely got any information about them. We didn't get any backstory. We didn't get what the maidens consisted of or what it entailed. We didn't get a view of why these maidens are so enthralled by Edward Fosca. Like, we got none of that. It, it should not be called the maidens. I felt like I never really got the answers that I was looking for. Also, the person who ended up being the murderer made no sense in my opinion. Like, it came out of less field and I just was not a fan of this so I gave it two out of five stars. I would not recommend it. I don't think you should read it but if you're interested in why so many people say they hate this book then pick it up but that's the only reason I'm gonna say you should read this. The next book I have is Here There Be Monsters. This is by uh, Melinda Barubi and I gave this a two out of five stars as well. 16 year old Skye has always been the protector of her little sister Deidre. When they move to a new town Skye seems to have no trouble fitting in. Deidre is having a little bit more of a difficult time and so when Deidre goes missing one day Skye will do anything in her power to get her back from the monsters lurking in the woods. So this took me so long to read. I started this book in November 2021 and I finished it on April 3rd, 2022. I was initially drawn to the cover because hello, it is gorgeous. I just thought it was super spooky looking and I needed it in my life. But then the story within is so incredibly boring. I felt like I was constantly waiting for literally anything to happen and nothing happened the entire book. I also just didn't like any of the characters. I felt that they were all very one-dimensional. I didn't care about what happened to them and I just overall was not a fan of this. So I gave it a two out of five stars which really sucks because this was like the first arc I ever received from any publisher ever. So it holds a very dear place in my heart but I, I, no. Just no, you know? Next up, I have Dreams Alive Beneath by Rebecca Ross. I gave this a five out of five stars. It was definitely my favorite read of the entire month. This takes place in the realm of Azenor, where Clementine Madigan lives. A plague where magic flows from the mountains causes nightmares to come to life. Her father is the territory warden of Hereswith, which means that he uses magic to banish the nightmares every new moon. Clementine has been training for as long as she can remember to take over her father's position when he is ready to retire, but then two magicians show up on their doorstep challenging her father for the warden position. She ends up suffering a great loss that plunges her into a century-year-old battle, and it's like the story of that. I think that Rebecca Ross is quickly becoming an autobi author for me. I love everything that I read that she writes. She wrote the Queen's Rising series duology, and and I instantly fell in love with that and this was no different. I was instantly drawn into this story, these characters, the plot, the magic system was just so much fun to read about. I loved Clementine as a main character. I think she was so fierce and clever and independent and I love how she never backed down from a challenge. I love how her entire storyline was just purely based off of revenge. I mean she did throw that away pretty quickly when she met the guy but I loved it while it lasted. I also actually enjoyed Pellin and I really enjoyed watching Clem and him grow closer as the story progressed. I really enjoyed how they went from unknown enemies to lovers. I just think that the story seemed very simple at the beginning but it became very multi-layered as it went on and I found it so interesting to learn more about like Felon and his family and the tale that kind of interweaves into this book. I just think that the idea of the seven wraiths was so well done in this. Definitely recommend this book. Five out of five stars. It was just so entertaining and I could not put it down. So read this book. Read all of Rebecca Ross's books because she is just a wonderful author. And then the final book that I have is Yinka, Where Is Your Husband? This is by Lizzie Damilola Blackburn and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. This follows Yinka who is 31. Her Nigerian mother and aunties are very concerned at this point that she has not found herself a husband. So when her cousin Rachel ends up getting engaged, Yinka decides to launch Project 
find a wedding date before her aunties can say anything and it's like the story of that. I think that Yinka was a very relatable character. I'm only 26 and even then I sometimes feel the pressures of like finding a man, settling down, you know, living that fairy tale life and at 26 I should not be feeling that but you know the pressure sometimes gets to you. I like how this book had a very heavy focus on self-discovery and realizing your self-worth. I will say that I do think that at times Yinka did not act like a 31 year old. She resorted to some very immature things and ways to get attention from the male people in her life. I really liked the mixed media format of this. There were a lot of like emails and text messages between Yinka and various other people. I listened to this on audiobook and they actually had like the little clicking sounds of keyboards and stuff when those parts of the book came up which I thought was a super cute touch. But yeah overall I give it a four out of five stars. It was cute. I had a good time reading it and the self-discovery journey was very well done so there you have it. All right, everybody. So that was part one of my April wrap up for 2022. It was a very long winded one because apparently I could not talk today. So I'm very sorry. But if you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in part two that will be uploaded at some point. Goodbye.